off. <laughs> wax off. I wax on, wax off, right? And this Miyagi said it. So he's got to know what hand movement and everything is the right direction, right? Yeah. I just recently watched that movie. It's actually, it's a good, it stands the test of time. Uh, you're, he's watching Cobra Kai. That's what he's watching. That's no, what I was watching Cobra Kai. No, but uh, uh, how come we're always working on your car? I need to get my car clean. Well, it's because you never bring it in for these videos. <laughs> you can bring it in. Okay, next time we'll do my car. All right, that's fine. The problem um, is it's always clean. Well, mine is, I left it dirty just for this video. Gotcha, okay. Well, actually, I left all that dirty. I've already did the rest of this car. So, so uh, today's topic, let's just j get right to it, oh. is uh, straight lines or circles. Straight lines or circles. Basically. Which is better, why, and the reasoning behind the big debate. You know, everybody's debating. You need to go this way. You need to go that way. You yeah. need to do this way. I uh, fortunately have written a lot in my life about how no. to work by hand. No, yes. you don't write. And I got a bunch of stuff here for working by hand. All right. Um, like I always say, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and share, comment. If you have anything that you want to talk about, about what we're displaying here, or if you have any ideas about any of future videos, post it in the comments or the live chat area. I'm going to go that way, turn it over to you, and we're going to have the great debate. Oh, and we have a Blast from the Past video that we're going to use. Oh, cool. Hey, uh, and real quick, um, just because sometimes people have a hard time finding out this type of information, um, I teach three of my big three-day detailing classes a year. I teach it three times a year. The first one's coming up February 19th, 20th, and 21st, but they're always in February. And then the first weekend of May, the last weekend of September, they are the most hands-on classes on planet Earth, and I've already got 14 cars lined up for the February class, 14 cars. There's virtually no sitting. We are just up working with all the cool tools. And if you want to sign up for my newsletter, that's another way to find out about anything that's going on. Uh, just shoot me an email, mike.phillips at autogeek.net. Okay, let's just jump right into this then, working by hand. Uh, there's always some controversy about which way to move your hand, you know? Um, some people talk about applying things in circles. Sometimes people talk about applying things in straight lines and sometimes people will argue as to which one to use and when. And actually I can uh, share cases or examples of when you could use both. You know, um, a circular motion is really good to spread a product out and I'll demonstrate that on the hood of the car. Straight line motions are a great way to really work a surface if you're gonna work by hand. You know, most people buy polishers nowadays, but if you're going to work by hand, and of course there's places on the cars where, you know, it's a lot easier or efficient to work by hand because you can't get a machine or a pad. Uh, you need good uh, skills to work by hand as long as, as well as good skills for working by machine. So um, there's a time and place for both. I think most of the controversy, however, comes from when people talk about inflicting swirls and scratches into the paint because of the direction you move your hand. And so I'm going to cover that too. Did I kind of cover the whole topic there, Yancey? I do believe so. Okay. Uh, I don't think you missed anything on that. Okay. So um, the first thing we need to do in order to demonstrate uh, working by hand um, in the direction is we need to clean this. And of course, we're going to clean this by hand. And so I'm going to demonstrate this is a car that is well maintained. What's the last thing you put on here for protection? That has Mohs coating. Oh, no, actually, it has 3D coating on it. Uh, 3D ceramic paint coating. Yep. Okay, so um, I'm going to bring over my little favorite tool here, the Grit Guard Universal Deco Detail Cart. And um, when we talk about working in straight lines or scratches, uh, when it comes to cleaning a car, you got to understand there's two types of car washing. There's the prep wash, where you're getting a neglected finish ready for a detailing session. And the detailing session could be you putting a wax on by hand or you taking a rotary buffer to your car. It doesn't matter. But the point is, is you're going to be doing something to the paint, obviously. And then there's a maintenance wash. Okay, now maintenance wash is when you've got something like this where it's everything's done. It just got dirty. So now you want to get it clean. And how would you move your hand to move a wash mitt or a microfiber towel over the finish to get it clean? So for maintenance washes... I'm not too particular in which way you move your hand because if I'm doing a maintenance, or I'm sorry, let me back up. Uh, maintenance wash, you mean prep wash. Pre prep wash. Can you go grab me a wash mitt? Yes. One of the fuzzy one, the fluffy alien worm ones I like. Okay, for a prep wash, because I'm going to machine polish the cars, to me it's not as crucial how I move my hand because any marring that I induce, I'm going to remove in the machine correction step. 
Makes sense? Makes sense to me. Okay. Now, after I've finished the car, though, now I want to be very careful. And even if I'm using things that are clean and soft, they're not contaminated, the problem is, is there's a good layer of dirt on here. And so when I put the mitt down on the surface and move it, it's gonna move the dirt over the surface and the dirt could potentially mar the paint. So if I'm given the choice um, for a maintenance wash to move my hand in straight lines or circles, I'm gonna move my hands in straight lines. And I don't wanna mar the finish, but if I do, then all the marring will be in straight lines, which is obviously not the goal. But a, a, a maintenance wash would look something like this for me. I would blast all the loose stuff off. By the way, that's a question in uh, uh, the IDA SB testing. You know, how do you wash a car? You start by blasting all the loose stuff off. And then after I've blasted the loose stuff off, if I'm gonna foam it or not, I would still gather my wash solution and I would start here in the middle. I'm not, I'm not gonna touch this because I'm not actually washing, but I would start in the middle and I'd make straight line passes and work my way out, okay? And at that point, I would either go to this side and do that side, or I'd stand here and rinse it. Now, the reason this is important for a maintenance wash is because if there's already a coat of wax, a sealant, or some sort of paint coating on here, the dirt that's on there is not going to want to stick very well. So you don't have to sit there and scrub a lot to get it to loosen up so you can rinse it. One or two passes is all you need. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because when I watch people wash cars, and this is in both of my how-to books, I explain this, people watching, most people don't pay attention. They go out on a Saturday to wash their car, they take their mitt, and they're just doing this stuff, okay? okay. Let's just scrub. Even if they're going in straight lines, they're just they're, they're, they're moving the mitt over the surface way too much. So what happens is if you loosen the dirt, and instead of just making a few passes and rinsing, you loosen the dirt, but you keep on rubbing that mitt over the surface, you've loosened the dirt and now you're grinding it into the paint. So you have to think you know, about the type of wash you're doing. Is it a prep wash or a maintenance wash? If it's a maintenance wash, then the dirt should not be wanting to stick to the paint because you've got wax sealant or coating on there. Start in the middle, make your passes like this, come over here and either rinse or go to the other side, then rinse. The point being is, you don't want to be scrubbing the paint because that's where the majority of your swirls and scratches come from. Makes sense Makes to me. Sense? Okay, but we're not going to wash this car today. We're going to use a spray-on product. This is a bead maker, right? Yeah, that's bead maker. Yeah, Sorry. so we're just going to use this as a waterless wash. And don't yell at me, people. I just poured it in there right before I was doing this because I couldn't find a bottle of it. So I just okay. had a gallon. So when you're doing a waterless wash with whatever your favorite product is, um, and I don't know if this is actually recommended as a water wash, is it? It's as a detailer, water wash, okay. you, can, yep, you can use that stuff for about okay. anything. So when you're using this, any product as a water wash, the difference between using this as a water wash and spray detailer is you lay down a heavy saturation. Okay, so that would look like this. And usually what I tell people, it's kind of like when you're doing, um, a, using a panel wipe, you want to get the product on there so heavy that it's almost going to start to stream off, but not quite because that's just going to waste product. So see it streaming off? That's too much product. So right before that point would be ample amount of lubrication to get this car clean without inducing marring. And Yancy, I'm going to do you a favor. I'll even do the other side. Well, all that's left is the hood and the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, I was only going to do one half. Oh, well, you know, you're such a nice guy. There's a reason why I keep you around. And of course, we're fortunate that we're in this air conditioned building, so this is not gonna try to evaporate off too quickly. Otherwise, I might not work such a big area. I thought I'd say that because if I don't say it, someone would ask the question, and it is a great question. Okay, so there's plenty of product for lubrication to do a waterless wash on a car without marring the paint. Yeah, let me get a really good close up of that. Okay. And then since we're not washing it, I'm just gonna use microfiber towels. Now, there's a couple different ways to use a microfiber towel. And in my classes, I teach, I teach waterless wash with a towel for prep wash and maintenance wash. Here's the difference. For a prep wash, I would just take this towel and swoosh, 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 wipe it off, get it clean, because I'm not that worried about marring the paint, because I'm going to come in and do paint correction. But when I have a nice finish like this, now I'm going to go totally AR. Well, that doesn't stand for AR-15. <laughs> I was going to say, it I know what it stands for. Anal retentive. Okay, 
So here's your towel folded. I have the fluffy side of this towel out because the fluffy side will trap and encapsulate any dirt into the weave versus the flat weave side, which would tend to press that dirt into the paint. And with the towel like this, which is a two-sided towel, it's got a fluffy side and a flat weave side. Some towels have one of each, but whatever your towel is, fluffy side for a water swash. Fold it four ways and I'll get four wipes out of this. So I'm gonna start right here. And now watch, I'm gonna use the front edge of that towel. And I'm just gonna come down here, get into your little scoopy-doo there. Scoopy-doo, is that the technical term? I'm yeah, sorry. okay. And all the dirt is right here in the front. All right, let me, no, hold it right there. Okay. All right. And off to the side here. but. At this point, you could either go to another side or get another wipe out of it. It depends on how many towels you have and how AR you want to be. I'm going to go ahead, since it's not my car, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and get another wipe. So now I'm going to put the towel down here. I'm going to lift it up so an unused portion of the towel is now dragging across the paint. Okay, you can see a line of dirt right there. Look at you. Okay, so theoretically, I didn't push this dirt back over the paint because I only made one wipe. I didn't do this one. Now, a person could get even one more wipe. So let me try that. I, I usually get about four wipes. You're better than me then. I get three. Okay, so there's the last wipe. And I did not push any of this dirt over the paint when I did it. Thank you. Okay, now I'll flip to the other side, and I can finish this, this side right here. So let's see. See, this is how you get Mike to detail your vehicle for free. You trick him into doing a video. There's my first pass. Oh, that was a dirty one. Third pass. And I'll get one more at that very end there. Okay. Now, now look at, can you zoom in on this? Yeah, I'm already there. Okay, now if I were to be making circles, I'd be pushing all this dirt over the paint. That's going to scratch the paint. You know, so you got to think. Think about this stuff. God, most people don't think. Okay, those two sides are done. I still have these sides. I'll go over and hit the other side. But this is a case where doing a maintenance waterless wash or with a spray detailer where I would use straight lines to clean the car. I would not use a circular motion. Okay, there's my first wipe. Come down here, lift it up. Second wipe. We'll get a third one. There's my third wipe, it's right above the second wipe there. Go to this side. First wipe. And second wipe. And you know, you can come back and then do a little touch up, you know, if you want to. But the, the important thing is, is the bulk of the dirt is now off that body panel. So it can't scratch it because it's not there. And what do I have up here, Yancy? You have your clean, dirty towel bucket. You know, over the weekend, I worked on a couple of cars, and for both my customers, I had to explain to them, this towel is dirty, but it's not dirty with leaves and sticks and dead bugs on the ground. So it's going to go into a clean bucket. And from here, at the end of the day, it's going to go to the washer, the dryer, or to the stainless steel bench that I'm going to clean, and then it's going to get folded and put away in the cabinets. You've got to have a process to keep anything that touches the paint uncontaminated, not just clean, uncontaminated. Look at you. I hate hammering on that point all the time. But, but you know what, some things it's need important. to be hammered on that because it's the it's the simple things that usually get lost. It's the little things. You the know? little things are the big the things, things is exactly. what I say. Okay, so then uh, I took care of that. And I know Yancey wanted me to demonstrate on some of these thin panels. Well, that would be more of like claying and stuff like that, but i yeah. still got to clean. Oh, yeah, you do have to clean. Sorry, there's, sorry. There's a straight line wipe. I forgot what we were doing for a brief moment. Don't beat me. There's a straight line wipe. And since this A pillar is a nice straight line, and I got a point to make with it, a straight line wipe. And it would actually be now ridiculous. You my windshield. <laughs> it'd be ridiculous to try to do circles on a long, thin panel. So. No, I would not want to do that. Okay, so, in the, so anyway, so there's when I would use a straight line motion to clean a car with either a any kind of wet wash where you're using a foam gun, a pressure washer, soap in a bucket, and when you're doing a water swash or spray detail or straight lines to avoid grinding that paint or the dirt into the paint, creating swirls and scratches. Okay, now 
the next thing you'd want to do is you'd, of course, want to do the baggy test, and then you'd probably want to clay the paint if it needed it. This actually feels like it needs to be clay. Oh, I'm sure it does. <laughs> it's so it's a daily a driver sits outside, right? Yeah, no, it sits outside. It's not a garage queen or anything like that. It gets used and abused. Okay, let me push this to the side. Okay, over here are three common tools for claying paint. And I'll bring them over here. Here's a clay towel, a clay mitt, and of course, detailing clay. And so again, the question, do you rub in circles or straight lines? And when you rub in straight lines, what direction do you rub onto the car? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just demonstrate clay. Uh, these are both great tools. I primarily use these tools for prep washes myself. Um, you do, and where are you gonna go? Uh, I'll just work right here in the middle of the hood here. All right. um, I don't have any clay lube, but I have some Sonax glass cleaner. Okay. Mike's favorite thing, Sonex glass cleaner. You can use it for anything. <laughs> okay, so again, if I was doing, usually if you're claying, it's a, it's a prep wash, okay? A maintenance wash, the car's supposed to be in good shape, you're not gonna clay, you're just gonna wash it and get it dry and it's date night, you're, you know, you're done. So prep wash though, you wanna make sure all the contaminants are gone before you start machine buffing. So I'm gonna put down my lube, put a little bit onto my clay, and then again, the question is, do you rub in circles or straight lines? Now, theoretically, this is where people get the stumble. If the products you're using are not abrasive, so you're not putting swirls and scratches in, theoretically, it doesn't matter which way you move your hand. That said, <laughs> if there are contaminants on the car and you pull them off into the clay and you're rubbing in circles, now you're grinding those particulates into the paint in circles. So in most cases, if you're claying a section of paint, you wanna use a straight line motion. And if you wanna really get AR, then you would go in the direction of the length of the panel or the direction, the, the length, the wind would flow over the car if you were driving down the road. And there's no real super hard reason for that type of logic, except at some point we all need to have a method to do the car detail, or otherwise we'll walk out to the garage and stall out trying to figure out which way to move our hand. So just have your own set of rules. Now on a thin panel, you wanna go the direction of the length of the panel. Here's a thin panel. It would be ridiculous to go like this. So yes. you would run your clay the direction of the length of the panel. Right here's the thin panel between the hood and this raised body line. So again, I would go the direction of the length of the panel. Now this also happens to be in the direction of the, the wind would blow over the car if you were driving down the road. But look up here, this, what do they call this, the front valance? The valance are right underneath the, the okay. light. So, so this runs the opposite direction, the wind would blow over the car, but it's a long thin panel. So now I would just simply run the clay the direction of the length of the panel. So there's two simple rules on which way to move your hand when claying. For larger panels, rub in straight lines in the direction of the length the wind would blow over the car if you were driving the car, or in the direction of the length of the panel, which everyone makes more sense. Did I nail that one, Yancy? Yes, you did. Okay. And uh, just for all of you guys that are out there watching this, the reason why we're doing this video, I'm gonna kinda take a little break here from that. Um, actually, let me bring myself up. Oh, where'd you go? You're hiding from me. The reason okay. why we're, we brought this topic up is because on some of our old videos, uh, we're getting, we're pointing, some people are pointing out that Mike's techniques have changed over the years. And which happens, technology evolves and some things make Everything it work. goes through an evolution. So, yeah, evolution. So, with that being said, we're gonna take down a path. This was probably <laughs> like our third or fourth maybe video that yeah, we ever did. It's way back. It's scary, people. I, I, it's one of the ones that gets a lot of play on YouTube and I wanna take it down, but I can't because it gets good play. <laughs> So, with that being said, you ready? So, ready? which one is that? Yeah, go ahead and play. Which one is this one? It's the one with the, the how to apply carnauba wax in a straight line. Okay, if you're going to play it, I'll go get the carnauba wax. All right, you, you can go. Okay. All right, here we go. This is way back. 
Welcome to another Let's edition to of Auto Geek Show Car Garage here in Stewart, Florida. I'm your host, Mike Phillips, and today I'm going to show you how to apply a premium quality Carnuba wax using the straight line technique of rubbing out paint using straight line motions. In a few minutes, I'll share with you in detail why to use the straight line technique when applying a Carnuba wax. And to my knowledge, this will be the first time in the history of detailing the reason for this technique has ever been explained. The technique has been recommended for decades but no one ever explains why to use this technique and I'll share that with you today. Before I share that however, here's what this video will show you. One, the proper technique to get wax out of the jar. Two, how to apply a carnauba wax using straight line motions. Three, how to carefully remove a carnauba wax using the microfiber polishing cloths and a technique I call breaking the wax open. And four, how to use the final wipe technique to give the paint a final wipe to reveal a deep, wet shine. So right from the start, let me share with you the reason why to apply a carnauba wax Here he using the straight the line technique. How to do when you're applying a carnauba wax to your car's paint, the number one goal is to work clean. This means everything has to be clean. The paint is clean because you just washed and dried the car. Your applicator pad is clean because it's been stored in a clean place before use. Your hands are clean because you wash them. And even the garage floor is clean because before you started, you swept the floor. So the utmost, highest goal is to work clean, and by working clean, you'll have done everything you can to ensure that you don't accidentally instill any swirls or scratches when working on your car's paint. But if by chance or by accident, any type of airborne dirt particle or abrasive particulate should you know, Mike, somehow enter the into the process of applying a carnauba wax to your you car's paint, Here's the skinny. Some people tell me I if you like use circular motions to apply a product, yep. that is, you move your hand in a circular motion like this, if any abrasive particles enter into the process, right, the you'll reason. inflict Explain circular it. swirls and scratches into the paint. And these are so horrible looking when your car is under the sun or under bright lights. Now here's the part no one ever explains, and let me tie this in with that problem. When you have hundreds of thousands of circular scratches in your car's paint, you can see the scratches from any height, in any light, at any angle. Now if you use straight line motions, you'll have to be at the right height and the right light and stand at just the right angle in order to see the defects. That's the story behind the story as to why to use the straight line technique for applying a carnauba wax. All right, wax. we can pause it there. Okay. We, we can pause that there. But basically, there's the reason why is I'm going to actually flip it back over to Mike and I'll let him recap the reason why and what happens. Uh, that goes to the circles, light, height. Okay. And make sure you do the little wobble like you did before. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> so there's actually a story behind that whole video. And at the time, the powers that be wanted to me to explain how to rub a car out in straight lines, even though at the time and even today, um, I don't adhere to that idea. Um, I did it because I was asked to. And, and I you did, got, and I, it was part of your job. It was part of my job. <laughs> uh, but here's something I learned from Barry McGuire. And if you think about it, it makes sense. And I said this when we started the video. If the products you're using, okay, the product could be an applicator pad, the product, and the wax, or whatever it may be, a spray-on detailer and a towel, whatever it is, if the things you're using are non-abrasive, so they're not putting scratches in the car, theoretically, it doesn't matter how you move your hand because you're not putting scratches in the car, okay? If you are putting scratches in the car, then quit using those products. <laughs> you know, just get something that doesn't scratch the paint, okay? So here's the, here's the thing about rubbing in straight lines and the whole swirl scratch problem. Uh, years ago, I wrote this article. What I did is I explained, if you have a focal point of light, say a swirl finder light or the sun or even one of these lights, and you look at the paint from where you're standing, because the, if, if there's circular scratches, because where you're standing and they're circular, at any point, the light's going to hit one of the radiuses of the scratches and bounce the light back at you. And so with a swirled out car, you don't have, it doesn't matter where you're standing, as long as you're across from the light, you're going to see swirls of scratches. With straight line scratches, you pretty much got to be at the right, right height, the right light, and the right angle because there's just a lot less chance of the light bouncing off the scratch because they're all in a linear pattern. But the bigger picture is don't do things to put scratches in the car, so then you don't got to try to control which direction they are. It doesn't even make sense. And here's what Barry McGuire taught me. If the products you're using are non-abrasive, then it doesn't matter which way you move your hand. And when you go to apply a product, 
it's so much easier to spread a product out using an overlapping circular motion than it is trying to spread the product out using straight lines. It'll take you forever. So let me just demonstrate that. In the original video, I was showing Pinnacle Carnuba Pace Wax, simple round yellow foam applicator pad. Watch the technique to get the wax on the pad. Twist the jar and the pad. Oh, new novel concept. Okay, here's some wax. Now, if I, I'm gonna, I'll do it out here. If I wanna try to spread this out in straight lines, when I move my hand here, if I wanna move over towards me, because remember, I'm trying to spread it out, when I start to come back, I start to lose wax because most of it is in that first swipe I made. Now, if I take and do a circular motion, okay, to spread the product out, as I spread this out, where I initially put my pad down, I'm coming back around and grabbing it. Okay. Basically, there's actually better product uh, uh, usage. Well, it's, it's just easier to get the product spread out using an overlap or circular motion. Now, if I wanted to rub in straight lines, I can because I've got the wax spread out. Okay, So that's why I say in early in this video, there's actually I can make a case for using both straight lines and circular uh, motions, circular motions and straight line motions. It just depends on what you're trying to do. But it's a lot easier to spread a product out using an overlap or circular motion than it is in straight lines. You're just wasting your time. Once you get it all spread out, if you want to make straight line motions, go for it. But me, I'd still do circles because this is not abrasive. This is not abrasive. Because you watch Karate Kid. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the job done. I'm usually all about speed. Okay. Of course, then you let that dry and wipe it off. Well, sovereign, you don't let dry. Um, I always let it dry. I break all the rules. You see. Oh, look at you. Okay, so now you have a wax on your coating. <laughs> <laughs> that thing got so many things on it. Okay, so uh, there's, a, there's a, a little bit of talk about straight lines versus circular lines when applying to products. Then, but that's for a non-abrasive, uh, what's called a pure wax or a show car wax or a non-cleaning wax. You could call it all three of those things, but it's all the same thing. It's a, it's a non-abrasive or non-cleaning wax. Now, if you were going to rub... Um, oh, let me uh, put this down. I know where you're going. Where am I going? To the... Compound? No. No. To rub in cars. Whoops, sorry, people. No, 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 no. With the fingertip. Yeah, okay. So, um, if you wanted to actually try to rub and remove swirls and scratches out of the paint, um, then you're going to do a couple things. And we actually covered this in a video earlier this year. Um, first of all, you're going to shrink your work area down to a size about this big. This is as big as the human human and the human hand can manage to rub at one time. There's no way if this was a swirled out car, I could tackle half the hood and physically rub that paint out and level it, you know, remove small particles of paint, and level it in an effort to make it a show car finish by hand. I couldn't do that big an area. So you got to do an area about this big. And um, and then you would still that you would still use a circular motion to spread your product out over this section of paint, but then you would rub in straight lines, and I'll explain why. Do you want to talk about your finger marks? Yes, I will. Finger marks. All right. But first, I need to get a compound. Well, and here you just go ahead and stay over there, and I'll, I'll put it. I'll get you. A compound. Okay. I think over against the wall is a Pinnacle Advanced Compound. That's a good one to use by hand. Right. And it won't mar up your car's paint. Okay, so when you're working on paint by hand or machine, one of the things that everybody knows me for is I'm always talking about abrasive technology. There's, there's really two kinds of abrasive technology. There's good or great and bad or crap, okay? There is no gray area. There isn't a compound, a polish, or an AIO that kind of works. It either works perfect or it's junk, okay? And here's what I mean by that. If you've got swirls and scratches in your car's finish, be it clear coat, Imron, single stage, whatever it is, the way you remove them is you rub an abrasive over the paint and you abrade the surface to level the highest portion of the paint to the lowest portion of the depths of the scratches or defects. You level the paint. So the product you're using is abrading or scratching the paint to remove scratches. And the good abrasive technology can do this without leaving its own scratch behind. Bad abrasive technology replaces one set of scratches with its own set of scratches. A lot of times they're finer, but they're still scratches. So there's no, there's no gray area. There's no kind of good compound polish or AIO. There's either great or junk. That's really how it is. 
Um, and, and so this kind of goes back to working by hand. So if you're gonna work by hand, um, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta use abrasive technology that is great. And here's one I trust, it's really expensive. I think this is like 50 bucks for a 16 ounce bottle, but it's engineered abrasives. And when you pour some out and fill it in your hand, it you there, you don't feel any chunks come out of there don't be shy no oh, it's being shy okay that's compound and most people think a compound should feel gritty okay this feels like jurgen's hand lotion it is so smooth and creamy yancy come here, over here and put your some hand, on your face tilt, tilt your hand down to me come over here and put some on your face to prove a point <laughs> no okay smooth and creamy so there's no chunky parts there's no grit in the bottle and um anyway so this is a a great abrasive technology, and that's why it costs more. You get what you pay for in life. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how I would work defects out using great abrasive technology. You wanna go down the top of the fender right there? Where do you wanna do? Well, first I'm gonna grab Or it. actually do the front by the headlight. First I'm just gonna grab a clean applicator pad. Uh, right here? Yeah. Okay, so now we're back to, I'm gonna run, run my hand the direction of the length of the panel, but this isn't as, I wanted to show something the size of a microfiber towel. Oh, okay, well then forget what I just said. Okay, so we'll just stay up here in the front so you can capture it on the video. All okay, right. so this is about as big of an area as you can work by hand. So let me show you how you would, the direction you'd move your hand to work that area. For, and, and I can't say first of all, so second of all, I would never try to do this by hand. I'd use a machine. It's ridiculous to try to work by hand. The, the human hand will never duplicate the results you can achieve by hand. Any machine, the cheapest machine or the most expensive machine. Uh, the human gets tired. The human has pressure points called your fingertips, and that kind of leads into what you're talking oh, about. All right, here, then let's go right here to yeah. this and finger marks. You notice the little uh, circles. circles that he has in these videos. Let me pull up the, I mean, okay. in, the in the pictures. And you want to explain to them yeah. what they're seeing? They're okay, seeing so the close-up of all the little Years dots. ago, when I was still out in Southern California, I was asked to test a product for a gentleman. Uh, had a really has a really good brand, really good name, great products, and he was going to introduce a brand new product with abrasive technology. So you know, whenever I test a product, I read the label. If it says to use with the rotary, I use with the rotary. If it says to use with the DA, I use with the DA. If it says you can use by hand, I use it by hand. If it says that you can use all three, then I test it with all three. This product said you could use it with hand or DA. So I went out to the hood of my own Honda Pilot, which was already flawless and I just simply applied the product. And what you're seeing there is when I'm moving my hand, okay, first, first thing I'm gonna use a circular motion to spread this product out. See how easy it is to get the product spread out with a circular motion? Okay, then if I want to really want to work swirls and scratches out, now I'm gonna switch to straight lines. And on the hood, what you see there is when I go to the end of my throw, my four fingers pushing down on there because that was horrible abrasive technology, left little, marks, finger marks. As I would come back and stop at the end of my throw this way, it'd leave finger marks. Back this way, finger marks, finger marks. And of course, scratches in between all the finger marks. But that's where the term finger marks came from, was that article. And that's what happens when you use crap for abrasive technology. Um, so back to what I was saying, you've got to use great abrasive technology, whether you're working by hand or working by machine, or you're just going to run into problems anyway. Now, to work out scratches by hand, I use the circular motion to get the product spread out, but now I'm going to go and work in straight line motions, and here's why. Now, do you do a cross hatch by any chance? No. Uh -uh. no? Okay. So I'm going to explain why I'm going to use a straight line motion. It's easier for me, my arm muscles, to move my hand and push down at a fast rate or a fast clip for about a minute, like this. I'm pushing hard, too, than it is to do this. Okay, this takes a lot more muscles to do. And again, I'm not, if I, in the real world, if I was gonna try to fix a swirled out car by hand, I'm not just doing this spot, I'm doing the whole thing, it's gonna completely annihilate me, okay? So that's why if you wanna work by hand and you wanna try to remove defects, you use a circular motion to get your product spread out, and then you rub in straight lines to remove paint. I can already hear you breathing heavy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now watch this. See at the end of my throw, some product builds up. Mm -hmm. I'm not a cheapskate, but I'm a spendthrift. So I'm gonna go up and grab that product. Spendthrift. And I'm gonna bring it back in and work it some more so I get the most use out of my expensive compound. I just wanna know, did you make that up, spendthrift, or is that No, actually... that's a word. Okay, 
And then after you feel like you've worked it long enough to remove the defects, of course you would stop and take your clean towel and wipe that off. Now, would you do that in circular? Well, um, good question. So first of all, whenever I use a towel, I want to inspect it. These towels are pre-inspected, okay? And then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna look at this like it's a clamp. I'm gonna clamp the edges, spread my hand out, and kind of scrunch the towel up between my fingers. So now I've got yeah. really good towel control. And I'm gonna come in here and use what I call the Pac-Man technique. So I'm gonna bite, bite, bite. I'm gonna take little bites in a circular motion. Just bite, 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 bite. And when you take little tiny bites of a product off, it makes it a lot easier to take the product off because your hand, because you're only taking a little small part of product off, the towel is over, able to overcome the surface tension between the product and the paint and get it off. If I were to have tried to take the whole thing off like this, the towel would have stayed here, my hand would have went here because the towel couldn't overcome the surface tension between the product and the paint. So that's why you take little tiny bites off with a clean towel that's been inspected. All right, uh, Jacob Herod, uh, Herod. Hey, Jacob. He turned around, actually, let me add this to the broadcast, uh, since he saw you doing that by hand. Can you use a machine polishing pad by hand? Uh, you, you, you can. Usually most of them are too large to really be effective. It, it really just depends on what you're trying to do. Now, I was demonstrating with a foam applicator pad and that would be the least aggressive method to apply a compound. If I really wanted to get in there and do some damage, you know, take out some paint, I would switch over to something microfiber. So the fiber would actually give the compound some extra bite, and fiber is an abrasive. Okay, that's why when you're buffing on soft paint, a microfiber pad on a DA will micromar the hell out of it because every one of those fibers is cutting the paint. That's why a foam pad will always finish out better more consistently on any paint than anything that's fiber because you have a uniform texture with foam. You don't have little fibers everywhere. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. So, but yeah, you could. And I got a couple of cool tools over here to show you, but you know, really in the real world, um, most polishing is done by machine. You know, I've been answering questions on how to detail cars technically since 1993. I can prove back to 1994. That's a long time to tell people how to remove swirls. And if most people don't have the skill level. The little technique I just showed you, spread in a circle, rub in straight lines, only do a size this big. Most people don't have the knowledge or the skill level to do it an entire car with a clear coat by Or the hand. patience. <laughs> they just, or the patience or the muscle. They just can't do it. And, <coughs> excuse me, over all these years, so many people have come to me in some form or another and said, hey, you know, I don't have a machine, I work by hand, and I always say, well, it takes more skill, knowledge, and technique, and energy, and patience to work by hand. Why don't you buy a machine? And then at one point, they actually go out and buy some. Then they come back, and they all say the same thing. Wow, I should have done this 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, so you know, if, if you're watching this, and you're still working by hand because you're scared a machine's going to burn the paint or put swirls in or cause damage, we're way past that, okay? There's so many tools out there that are just so safe. You, the only way you could hurt your paint is if you held the tool over the hood and dropped it on the car. Yeah. So if you want to work by hand, go for it. But man, it's a whole lot of work. Well, there, this, well it's a good tool to know because there are places that you may well, not be able to get into. And, so. and back to your point, it's important to have good hand techniques. Now, in my big three-day classes, a lot of times when we get to the wet sanding session, which is Sunday, and I bring in real cars for the class to learn how to hand sand and machine sand, but a lot of times, again, there will be places, you know, where you, you just really can't get a machine, okay? It's too close to a component, an edge or something. So you, you need to do that by hand. And then, of course, if you can't, when it comes to take the scratches out, you might not be able to get a machine in there to pull the scratches out. So you need good hand technique to pull your sanding marks out. So it's, it's a good skill to have, but in the big picture, you really want to try to do everything you can by machine. When it comes to the paint correction, paint waxing, things like that. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and let's do a quick recap. Let me square you up a little bit. Um, so what you're saying, just yeah, go ahead and stay right there. Yeah. Is when would when would technically be a good time where hand motion is actually require you know you have to watch your hand motion. well and I, I i mentioned this at the beginning so when you're washing a car there's two types of car washes there's the prep wash and a maintenance wash prep wash is a car you're, that's neglected you're getting ready to to put it into a detailing session and i, I like to use the term detailing session because it's kind of general and fluffy mm -hmm. i don't know what people are going to do me 
I'm going to take a beast to everything and get it over with. But uh, if you're going to use a port cable, you know, or a, a, a Grills Garage or a Rupes polisher, that's a detail session. So you're going to wash a neglected car. And at that point, it really doesn't matter which way you move your hand because if the car's neglected, it's probably already filled full of swirls and scratches and you washing it ain't going to make any, it's going to make a, a hill of beans as far as the difference goes. Now, if it's a maintenance wash, your car's all beautiful. That's where you'd take your wash mitt, as I just showed earlier. You would, I always like to show people to start in the center and work their way out. Same thing with machine buffing. You don't start here and work your way in. You always start in the center as far as you can reach, so this way. And you just make one or two passes over each square inch and work your way out. And then you would take your water hose and rinse. Okay, So that's straight line. So a prep wash, does it matter? Maintenance wash, you really want to go in straight lines. All right, what about if you're doing a inf like a detail, like, like a quick detail? A quick detailer. Um, and then I demonstrated that. for uh, um, In my class, for prep wash, I don't care how people move their hands. You know, just get the car clean. Because, you know, people spend so much time doing things that aren't important. And then they say, hey, how come it takes me so long to detail a car? Well, because you're spending so much time doing things that aren't important. important. Get the car clean so you can get to the next step. When it comes to a, a maintenance wa a wash where you're using a detailer, you're back to straight lines and using multiple, multiple, multiple towels. And if you've got the budget, you know, buy 20 towels for your spray detailer or your waterless wash. If you don't have the budget, now you're going to go back to the technique I showed where we were folding it up. Yeah, folding it and then using the leading edge, the trailing edge, and the, let's see if I can pull that up. You know, the way, so you're, you're wiping with the leading edge, then pulling the towel up and get in the middle and maybe get one more pass because you don't have enough towels. Here's what you do to avoid that. If you just want to make one wipe with one side, buy a lot of towels. And guess where you can buy a lot of towels? <laughs> Gee, uh, I don't know. There's one place <laughs> called Auto Geek. We sell towels. All right. Now, another thing would be what about uh, sanding and so forth? Would you be oh, able gosh, to? Oh, gosh, good question. You know, that's a little bit of a tricky topic because... There is a technique called the X pattern for sanding, but it's an advanced technique and only somebody that knows what they're doing and has a lot of paint to work with should be doing it. But in most cases, if you're hand sanding, you're always gonna be moving your hand in straight lines. You don't ever wanna, I, I know there's this, <coughs> excuse me, when I talk a lot, my voice dries up. I know that there's some people actually think that you can use a crosshatch pattern. The theory being, say if I started out with a thousand grit. So I sand this way for a thousand grit. Now I come back with 1500 and sand this way and I sand until all the thousand grits are gone so all this left is 15. Then I come back with 2000 and go this way and I sand with 2000 until all the 15 are gone. In theory and on paper, that sounds like a good idea. That way you know you've removed all the thousand of the 15, the two, do you go to 25 and three? In practice, it doesn't work. What happens is you end up with scratches. Yeah. The paint is completely scoured. You'll hate yourself. You'll never get them all out. And you'll wonder why you took that guy on the internet's advice. <laughs> Not mine, the other guy. Because he has YouTube service. Because I teach going straight lines. Now, straight lines for everything by hand, but there is a thing called the X pattern. Okay, explain. And guess who taught me this? I know it was uh, uh, Rich, oh, Rich Evans, Evans. at... Um, well, he... That has his own company. Yeah, uh, Rich Evans at Huntington Beach Body Works. That's it. So back around 2007 or so, um, for some reason, I got put in charge of wet sanding, cutting, and buffing the big Meguiar's semi trucks. No, you were gullible and, and said yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, nobody else wanted the job, and I guess I needed something to do. And we, and the worst thing about this is we were doing this outside, but in Southern California, that's like 75 degrees, so it's no big deal. And we're talking semi-trailers, okay? And, and Rich Evans and his painter, I think they, remember, they put 10 coats of clear over the graphics, the flame jobs of the McGuire's lettering. And so when I, when I went out there and I had my team of people and I was teaching them how to sand, I was teaching them what McGuire's teaches, stand in straight lines. And at the time, 3M Trizac- You were our message. Yeah. I sent a message. At the time, all the cool machine sanding discs had not been invented. So don't someone go, well, you should have used Abrilon or Trizac or blah, blah, blah. They weren't invented yet. We were hand sanding with Nikon, Japanese electronics grade paper. And Rich Evans came along and says, no, no, that, that is going to lead to ruts. As his term, he says, if you're always sanding straight lines because of the unequal pressure point, even on the best backing plate in the world, you will tend to have deeper scratches next to shallow scratches because of the pressure of the backing plate from your hand. Makes so sense. he says, he said the X pattern. So not crosshatch, but if you think about it, it's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So he said, sand like this, 
and then come back this way with the same grid of paper. You're not changing grids. And that way, you're not standing in a linear motion forever and putting in these deeper ruts. And here's what I got to say. It's a hard concept to understand, but the trucks came out beautiful. So it does work, but you know, that, that's a huge project and we had all the right tools, equipment and training to get it done. And probably a lot of people. But for most people, straight lines. And then I got a thing called the rule of thumb, okay? And if you type in the rule of thumb and add my name, Mike Phillips, you'll pull up my article and see a picture of my thumb, okay? And what that means is, you, you, here's, a, here's a common sense rule for sanding. You never want to put sanding marks where you can't get your buffer. I mean, if you do, you can come back and use hand techniques to pull them out. And this would be good for someone that's working on their own car, but if you were trying to do this for money or in a body shop situation, there's no time for that kind of detailed, perfectionist detailing work. So as a general rule of thumb, you stay about a thumbnail distance away from edges and raised body lines. And um, then you don't got to come back and try to put a buffer there because on an edge or body line, you're going to burn through the paint. That's what the rule of thumb is about. It's to keep you from buying some other guy a paint job. And the human muscle is the way it is that if I cognitively am trying to run a backing plate and say a thumbnail distance away from the paint, I will get kind of close and kind of smooth that paint over and make it look better and then buff it out. And if some people, Yancey, yeah, some people, I know, I know you guys are, you know, AR and uh, OCD, right? Yeah, that's a more politically correct term. More politically term. correct term, OCD. <laughs> okay, so some people say, well, Mike, if you're doing a custom paint job, like you got a 1967 Chevelle, it's been sanded, there's orange pill, and you've been hired to go in and be the, the, the god of sanding and buffing and take all the orange pill out. If I do, say, a thumbnail distance away from the edges, then won't there be orange pill up there? Well, of course yeah, there will be. Because it never got touched. And next time you go to a car show that you know, the, and you're looking at cars that you know have been sanded and buffed, Look very careful at the big easy to sand and buff areas and you'll notice the orange peel starts to kick in on the edges because not only do we not have the time to do that kind of perfectionist sanding and buffing, nobody else in the world does either. And if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're good enough and people will pay you by the hour or it's really your thing, go for it. But in most cases, I mean, you're talking about a lot of time to sand right up to an edge yeah. and, and buff and on an edge and, and not go, Whoops, look Oops. at that. I see the color of the paint on my buffing pad. And then, or you see the metal going through. Yeah, the metal as you burn through. So it's just a good rule of thumb. You guys can do it however you want to, but that's my rule of thumb. It's what I teach in my classes. It's called the rule of thumb. All right. Well, with that being said, I am going to turn around and take this to... Yes, it is that time. Viewer <laughs> questions where you ask, Mike answers, and I just regurgitate your questions onto the screen. So let's... Scroll this all the way back. Where are you going to be at? You're just going to hang there? Uh, where do you come over here. You know, I, I, if someone wants to know about metal polishing, I was actually answering a question today on how to get that chrome look polishing metal, and it has to do with the way you move your hand. Oh, look at you. All right, where are you going to be? Right there? Uh, right here is good. I was going right. to put this wax away. Let me turn around and pull this up. Okay, you stay there. Gotcha. Let's go here. Hi, Roger Lackey. He is from, oh, do you know where this is at? Paso Robles, California? I do know where that's at. All right, well, that's where he's from. We got Mike's Auto Detailing he's saying hi to Humberto, and Humberto's Rogers, and he's, everybody's talking. Uh, Michael O'Neill, there's my Mopar buddy. And I've got all these cool tools for working by hand if anybody's interested in them. We'll get to that here okay. in just a second. Uh, like the Polish and Pow? Yes. All right, let me get through this a little bit. Uh, much love from Athens, Greece. Thank you for tuning in. M, M Detailing Car. Oh, we have one from the Netherlands. Right. Don't forget this guy. Uh, we'll get there in a second. The bean coming in the rear. There we go. Home. How many people out there are you still uh, suffering from all this COVID and, and like having to work from the house and stuff? I'm kind of curious about that. Um, Amber, what do you call it? I am trying some new software and stuff, so I'm working through that, sorry. So your your system's going through an evolution. Yeah, my system is going <laughs> through an evolution, and probably in two weeks, it will be I love that word. Evolution, evolution. So bear with me, I gotta work some things before I can add some things, so. And Humberto, you, you're funny, I must have detailed that lens, ha. 
Uh, we have uh, Cesar Juarez. Uh, hello from Mexico City. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Where's all your guys' questions? Never heard a bead maker uses a wireless wash either. There's uh, videos that we did with uh, Rennie and um, Melbourne guy, uh, Justin Lobato, where they went through the entire smorgasbord of uses for bead maker. You can pretty much use that for anything. Uh, straight lines, sup guys, click guys. Oh, hey, here's one for you, Mike. Andreas Flores, sup guys, the clip. The Pleat Guide to the Show Car Shine is a great book from Los Angeles, California. Thank you. You know, um, there is a ton of information in that how-to book, and I always tell people, if you were to read that from cover to cover, I don't mean to be to offend anybody, but you probably know more than most detailers because I put what was in here on paper. Uh-oh, that's scary. It's a good foundation. There's a couple different trade schools that use it as their workbook. And I've met people that have detail shops, you know, large detail shops with employees, and they make new employees read that book, and they've created their own tests from that book that they tested. Well, we do that read. with uh, the new sales people when they're on oh, the yeah. phones. We, Anybody that, gets hired here, they got to read through the entire book. Yep. Uh, oh, Michael O'Neill brings up, what about clay sponges? I, um, the same thing for the, uh, the same technique that I shared for clay towel. And in fact, I had a bunch over there. I should have grabbed one. I have the uh, Griot's garage and the mothers. Okay. Uh, same, same idea. Rub in straight lines, the direction of the length of the windward over the car or the direction of the length of the panel. Don't do circles. Okay. Uh, why are clay, did, I'm sorry, Hans Clausen. Uh, why are clay discs always six inch and why are there no three inch clay discs? There are, um, um, a car pro or is it car pro uh, no it's uh who makes the uh the original clay towel was nanoskin 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 makes a three inch disc in fact can you zoom over there and show the uh, cyclo no I'm not okay scan the cyclo <laughs> polisher they're they're four inch discs the cyclo polisher takes two four inch pads about like this and um nanoskin makes a four inch clay disc that'll fit on either a four inch vacuum plate on a porter cable type tool or on the Cyclo. In fact, um, I used to teach a dedicated Cyclo class here. I was probably the only guy in the last 50 years that's done that, but I teach so many other tools now that it kind of got put off to the side. Okay, let's go here. Let's go to Andy Olson. I was always taught to go in straight lines so the eye won't pick up the scratches. And Mike did the case yep. of that. And, and then again, the, the bigger picture is don't use things that put scratches in. <laughs> that's to start with. And nowadays it's easier to do than ever. In the old days, just about everything we had that was a compound, a polish, or a cleaner wax. A lot of you guys call it cleaner wax and AIO and all in one. But those things are the things that have abrasives. And in the old days, all the abrasive technology was pretty much junk. It all put scratches in. The only way you ever got a show car finish was the last step putting a wax on and filling in the very fine scratches from the fine polish, the last polishing product you'd use in the process. Makes sense. Um, J.R. Marquez, I think this is when we were doing the video, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Sham, wow. I just loved your little an angles. <laughs> you did a little angle dance. You need to be animated. You know, when yeah. I took a class from somebody and they just stand there like this, and then the A is this, and B is that, and we're going to do that, I fall asleep. So yeah. I try to amp things up. Yeah, he does. Believe me, people. He does. I um, make my classes fun. I include comedy. <laughs> Well, you show up. That's comedy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. We have Matt Duffy. Mike does not age. What the hell? Yeah, you know, um, it's uh, I'm I'm part Indian, Native American Indian. Oh, is that what it is? That's what I attribute it to. Calipuya uh, Indians. Then Humberto's backing him up on that. Mike hasn't changed a bit from that time to now. Uh, we have Mario. I think I said your name right. Mario Medice. Hola, oh. Mario from Brazil. Uh, we both know the same. If you call ten minutes early, a second one. <laughs> yeah, right. Michael O'Neill. If you call within ten minutes, you'll get a second one for free. Uh, <laughs> Paid shipping. Pay extra shipping, and yeah, we'll send you for an extra shipping. Uh, that's right. Uh, and we're just talking back and forth. We have Ferricchio from Italy. Let's add the broadcast. We answered that one already. Um, all right, A Real G35. I would love to see a video of Mike discussing his favorite detailing products. We did. That was two videos ago. Right before go to, Christmas. Yeah, go to YouTube and you'll see the products that we're using 
uh, up till December of 2020. Yep. What's the latest and greatest stuff? Yep, you shared some of your favorite stuff. I shared some of my favorite yep. stuff. So uh, let's go here. Travis Townsend, what is a good affordable compound? Hey, Travis, long time no see. Last time I saw you, we buffed out your aqua colored Ford Bronco in my garage in Albany, Oregon. That's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, what was this question? <laughs> <laughs> Memory lane made you lose your mind. Uh, what is a good affordable compound? Uh, Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. Okay, then he comes right back with, if you are cutting with the machine, will the paint get dull first? Uh, not with a good compound, it'll get shiny and clear. Good compounds finish out like polishes. By the way, when you see that bottle of Meguiar's Ultimate Compound, you'll see a Mercedes-Benz on there where someone did a before and after diagonally. That was me. That was you. I've got two of the cars I've detailed in my life on the covers of Meguiar's bottles. That's kind of cool. Look at you. All right, Hans coming in. Would you would you move a DA in the motion of the machine of the machine or in the same motion of the machine? Well, I, I'm not sure exactly what he's asking, but uh, here's the oh, here drills. here he comes back in after that. So machine goes clockwise. Would you move it counterclockwise? No, no. But I have seen people that when they polish, they try to help the polisher. <laughs> uh, you don't need to help the polisher. Just move it, you know, in lines, the direction in of the, the section pass. Yeah, you don't need to help the polisher orbit. In fact, that always looks kind of funny when I see people doing that. <laughs> There's a couple of things I see people do funny. I like the guy that finishes the stroke and then does a little flip, and uh, then a little well. flip, then a little flip. I just go, what the hell are you doing, dude? Just buff out the paint. Uh, I know, I, I watch painters when they do that. So, you know, if people, if people, you've seen me buff out a car, I first of all, I get, I get in and get the job done, and I count all my passes out loud. And uh, I get cars done so fast because I don't lose track, you know. Oh, here's kind of a loaded question. Becky Ballock, I think I said your last name right. What is the best size buffer for a VW Beetle 2006 with convertible top? Not a lot of surface areas. I usually just do it manually. Um, a good polisher for you. You know, believe it or not, you could get away with the cordless. <laughs> A lot of people like this. It's small, but it's cordless, and it's got a lot of power. That or a Griot's? The Griot's G8 is right here. This is this would be a good tool. Believe it or not, the old school Porter cable, you know, if you just want to get a reliable, simple tool. Yeah, there's the basically an orbital. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, free-spinning random orbital short stroke. Okay, don't go long stroke. Don't get on that long stroke bandwagon. With and something due to the curves. fact that the curves, your 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 car is a you're bubble. Gonna, yeah, your car, your pads are going to stall out. You never get anything done. Stick with short stroke, you know, inexpensive tool. All right, we have Irving Gallo's Detailing, Ontario, California. Saludos. We have Renardo. Hey, Renardo. Hey guys, thanks for all your techniques. Actually, it's Mike's techniques. I'm just podcasting. I, I misspoke. I meant to say the um, Griot's Garage G9. G9, G8. I, I have a G8 here. here. I wouldn't try to do whole cars. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but you could. But the G, the G9, G9, buy it. It comes with a six-inch backing plate. Throw that away. Buy a five-inch backing plate. Then you can turn and turn and um, smaller pads, which would fit your car better. You're looking at about 200 bucks to get into machine polishing yeah, with the Griot's with G8 with pads. And you have a lifetime warranty. Uh, let's go here. We have Ramiro. He is from London. He's saying hello. Hey. Oh, all right. Hey, you must be answering my COVID question. Uh, Hans, here in the Netherlands, we are not about allowed on the street after 9 p.m. If we do, we get a ticket from the police. Wow. Wow. Hope everybody's like, their numbers are coming down. Uh, let's go here. Ian Cannon. Good evening, gents. Another informative show. Thank you very much. We try. Don Weagle, you can't see a mic, thanks. We have Freddie Cano. Hey guys, with waxes is the best now and stay longer in the cars. With waxes, is it best to, best now or stay longer in the cars? Do you understand that question? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey guys, with waxes is the best now and stay longer in the cars. I'm not <laughs> quite getting that question. <laughs> with waxes, apply them and wipe them off. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, don't most quite. most waxes, just so you know, most waxes, the way they're going to bond to the paints through the drying process. There's some waxes out there. In fact, the one I was showing earlier, they call it whoa whoa, wipe on, wipe off. And that just makes it easy on you. To be to be honest, two things from my experience. One, you let it fully dry. If it's a quality product, it's still going to wipe off easy. Two, you're going to leave more wax behind because if you apply it and wipe it off, you just wiped it all, it all off. off. 
Okay. Good for show cars that don't go outside, but for anything that's the day of the driver, let it dry. Okay, uh, we have Roger Lackey. Where can I buy your book at? Mike, take it away. Uh, show Car Garage. Uh, <laughs> Showcargarage.com. Uh, go to AutoGeek, and on the left hand, the left hand side navigation, there's a text link that says "Shop by Brand." Click on that, and then scroll down to see a cheesy picture of me on the book cover. Click on it, and it has all my books. Yeah, and they're both available in ebook, ebook, e -book and yeah, printed paperback. Book. And the ebooks and iBooks have links in them that you click on, and they'll take you to places. You actually on the get internet. more if you do the electronic. Yeah, especially and the ebook. I mean, yeah, the ebook one because you actually have videos in there too. Yeah, the paperback book actually has the hyper the uh, the web URL addresses in some places, and I actually had someone uh, contact me and say, "Hey, when I click on them with my finger, it doesn't go anywhere." You know, paper book. <laughs> duh. It's not an iPad, it's paper. It doesn't go anywhere. Why is this not working? <laughs> we're not quite there yet, people, but we're working on it. Maybe with virtual reality in the oh future. Oh my God, that's funny. Uh, three inch disc. Is it a three inch claim disc? Uh, four inch. They're four inch. They're only four inch? Yeah, there's some over there against okay. the wall. Uh, the nano skin four inch disc. And you could actually put one on the polishing pal. Yes, you could. Like you could this. Pad. Then Sonax has a little hand pad also. Oh, too. yeah, I forgot about that. Sonax has a, and so does NanoSkin. They both sell hand backing pads. So it looks kind of like a, a strap with the Velcro on one side, and that'll slap right onto a NanoSkin or a uh, Sonax uh, clay disc. And then you can do it by hand. <laughs> Richard, I love your thing. Uh, <laughs> Richard Volskoff. I, I think I, I screwed your name up. I'm so sorry. Your bad, last name. Good video, always learning something, but once I started using the Flex Pixie, it's tough to go back to the hands-on method. That's right. <laughs> once you go machine, you don't go yeah. back. Uh, la, 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 la. Travis Townsend's back. When you use compounds, will the dull paint? Oh, he, I, we are answered. Sorry, we already answered both of those. Uh, Jay Moyer, 90, thank you for all the info. Love the videos. Thank I you. I used to work at Hewlett Packard in Corvallis, Oregon with Travis. Sometimes we would carpool. He was a real car nut. So when your car was broken down, he'd come and pick you up. <laughs> and when his car was broken down, I would pick him up. All right, I got you. Yeah. Oh, wait, Travis, did he ever do the headlights with flashlights? Did you ever have to drive him to work <laughs> no, with headlights with flashlights? No, never saw that one. Okay. But I did have a 73 Blazer when I knew Travis. All right, here we go. Let's go to Kevin Rice. He what? would remember my drag boat, too. Uh, Kevin Rice, what did I miss? Can you repeat it, please? Yes. Laughing out loud. Yes, uh, it's called <laughs> Hit Replay. <laughs> It's called Rewind. Uh, Umeyer, <laughs> Khan. You guys, I'm from Pakistan and I would like to ask a question. We use Meguiar's 105 as a cutting compound, but sometimes it starts sticking with paint. How to deal with it? Well, it's, it's a very, you know, that's one of the complaints about that product for the last 10 years. It's a dry product, starts to dust. Some guys will add a few drops of baby oil to it. I'm not saying to do that, and I'm sure McGuire's would never say to do that. I'm just saying some of them other guys have done that and made it a, a wetter product. Another option would be is get a different product. You know? <laughs> um, the well, they may not have an option. Now my well, if you can get it. McGuire's 105, you can get McGuire's 110 or 100, and both those are wetter products. I'm okay. a big fan of both the other two products. I was actually at McGuire's when I have a lab sample bottle of M105. The chemist, head chemist, personally walked over and gave to me to test out on the Batmobile. There and you I go. put a picture of it up on the forum last week about that. Oh, at uh, the auction that I went to, they had a Batmobile had, car. Yeah. Batmobile's cool. Uh, little, little, little. Chicks dig it. Ian Cannon, Batman. what's the best spray wax to use when the temperature is minus three? Over here in the UK, they tend to freeze upon contact. Please help. Oh. Call move somewhere warmer. You know, I, I would take a look at the Sonax spray wax. What is called? Um, speed wax? Is that what it's called? Speed wax? The it's, yellow one? It, no, it's in a red bottle, but it's a yellow wax. Yeah, I want to, I want to say it's speed wax. I think it's speed wax, but Sonax is made in, in Germany, Germany, and they're familiar with your temperatures, and I'll bet you, and they're a big company. I'll bet you money that they've uh, they've addressed that. But I've got an article on that, and here's the deal. Nothing's going to work great when it's really that cold yeah. or super hot, you know, the two extremes. And I know sometimes you don't have an option, but really you want to try to get things so they're in the 60 to 80 degrees. Did you ever see the video? Um, uh, PJ, if you're watching this, our buddy from Dodo Juice, did you ever watch their video that they did when they're detailing in the snow in a blizzard? 
absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that was just yeah, absolutely. That's where they absolutely all started off. <laughs> absolutely. But no, they they he did a really. I've detailed in the snow outside. It's not fun. <sighs> Things don't work as good. You got to work harder, faster, and get worse results. It just there's no easy answer. Uh, I don't know. Maybe something like Bean Maker would be a, a get by type product. I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. All right, we have Romero again. Uh, Conk Kimmy are good compounds. Have you ever used that? Uh, you know, um, I, I've never used, I've used their products. I've tested them for the company, and they were great. Conk Kimmy makes great stuff. Great embrace of technology. We don't sell it here, so that's why you don't, you know, I, I don't show things that you cannot buy from us. That's called a business model. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, duh. <laughs> so uh, that's why you don't ever see me using the products. If if they ever get their products in an auto geek store, you'll probably see me do yeah. full write-ups on them. All right. We have Matt Duffy here. Mike is a car god. I need to <laughs> I need to make the camera go back out because his head's going to start a little. Yeah, just a car guy. Love to be trained by the guru. Much respect. Get one of my classes, man. They're fun. We have Stuart Kip. Hi, guys and gals. Greetings from down under. Down under. Oh, that's one. That's one country I want to go to. I want to, I want to go to. <laughs> Me too. We need. Do you need a class over there? I think we need to go to a class. We got to get through this COVID thing. Well, I think Australia actually they they're like think wiped out. I yeah. I yeah, think they're, I think they're totally done. I, do I have, think they're uh, doing really well. I do have roadshow classes coming up at Lake Country in uh, Wisconsin, Oconomowoc, and also in. You said it right. Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, and also in uh, Indianapolis. Indiana at the Sonax facility. So I have two roadshow schedules, uh, classes scheduled. The dates aren't up yet, but they are going to be around. If you can't get to the big three day here, go to the two day there. Okay. Uh, we have James Green Street. Good compound and polish to use in direct sunlight. Five inch, 15 millimeter polisher. Um, if you, um, you know, I'd go with 3D. 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 Get their 3D one. Just get one product. Use it as a compound. Use it as a polish. If, if there's ever a time that you're not going to be installing a coating, so you don't need, you know, to use a panel wipe to get the paint perfectly clean, then I'd recommend the Blackfire One Step. So I had a guy email me today. He's working on a black truck out in the sun, and he's working on a Robello uh, center console out in the sun. And um, I, he said uh, he asked me about the Blackfire One Step, and I says one of my uh, one of my past students cleared a million dollars detailing RVs outside in Fort Lauderdale. We need and to have him up here. We should. Uh, well, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, he uses, he comes by here because he lives in Port St. Lucie and drives down to, that's, that's a long An hour drive. and a half? Yep. And he, but he buys, uh, buys the Black Fire Winslow by the gallon and then he uses them on the high end. That means base coat, clear coat finished RVs or motor coaches, whatever you want to call expensive them. expensive ones, people. It's easy to wipe off. It does the job. And the problem with motor coaches is is there's no way to wash one and dry one easy, okay? There's just no way to do it easy. Anybody can do it, but that's where most of the marring comes from. So yeah, you can put a ceramic coating on there and that will help, but if they're still gonna get marred and scratched and the owner wants perfection, it'd be easier in my mind to use Blackfire One Step and just put it on a maintenance program. Like once a year, just hit it again. Maybe yeah, every six that. months, depends on what they want. But okay. because the product's so easy to use and it works so well, it's you know, it's kind of a six and a half. Five of they, another. Yeah, it's, you know, it's toss okay. up. All right, here we go. We got Michael O'Neill in Quebec. Curfew is 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Puerto Rico, we have Humberto in Puerto Rico. Curfew is now from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Everyone must wear a mask. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's sad out there. People. We're all so tired of this. Uh, let's go here. Don Wheel. Best training I got was from Mike and Jason at Rup Jason Rupes. Training Center. Yeah, I taught a class, my one of my roadshow classes out at the Rupes Training Center. Don, the only thing I'd say, the difference between the class I teach there and the class I teach anywhere else is you work on a lot more cars. You know, that's just that's just the fact of the matter. You know, yeah. we did a lot of classroom time. Classroom's good. Jason's style. My style is I put the things in your hands and put you to work on cars. But you remember when that guy brought the truck in? And everybody sanded that it down. That guy brought the truck. Oh, it, you're talking about that class. It, yeah, okay. Jason's class. And then the class was just about over, but the truck was still full of sanding marks. And so I went over with the rotary. I pulled all the sanding marks out. And then I grabbed the Bigfoot 21, a white pad, and the diamond polish. And I pulled all the holograms out. 
Then everybody kept inspecting my work, trying to find a single flaw, and nobody could find anything. <laughs> That's kind of what I remember about that class. That <laughs> one, the, the, you were, you're validated. <laughs> the Ferrari was validated, and the Ferrari that we buffed out with single stage paint. That was cool. All right, here we go. We got Freddie Keno. Where can I get a video about paint correction? You are I'd say the best man. one is that one we made about how to uh, do the test spot with the DA. No, the, I, I think you're joking. Oh, yeah. you, you, you can you can <laughs> see them all here. If not, I will send you a link of all probably like over a thousand videos uh, that we've. Was made. that sarcasm? Uh, sarcasm. I'm uh, like Sheldon. You know, I have to work it. Yeah, you need to work at work at picking up on people's emotions. <laughs> Stuart <laughs> Kip, we need a class here, please. I don't know where you're at, Skip. Stuart. Um, if it's nice and sunny and a really cool place. Yeah, yes. the, 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 the doing roadshow classes is, is fun to do, but the logistics have to be right because unlike other classes, I'll ship in a pallet of a thousand pounds of tools and there's a week to ship it there and a week to come home. And I gotta make sure there's gonna be enough people there to make it worth everybody's time or yep. that just doesn't work. Yep. You know, you have to have commitments from people and uh, it'd be easy just to fly in or drive in and make you guys all bring your own stuff. But I send everything there. So if we're showing a glass cleaner, everybody has one in their hand. Yeah. You don't have to go, hey, Jim, when you're done using that glass cleaner, can I borrow it? I send in enough stuff that it is total hands on your hands on everything. All right. Let's I'm going to do a little speed round here. Sure. Uh, did you Matt Duffy, did you not do one in Pennsylvania? already? I did. I did okay. one in Pennsylvania. It's a great okay. class. So we did. We've been there. We always can go back. Uh, we have Keith Deep Duplizzi. Greetings, gents. You know Keith. Hey, did, Keith. Did I, I By the way, I'm going to send you that email about the boat class. Keith is going to be here for my boat class. Um, uh, we're, I'm going to be covering all the things on the IDA marine test in the class, uh, plus working on two boats. And, and those classes, by the way, that's coming up in March, first weekend of March. Those classes will start at 7.30 sharp. They will be over about 5.30 both days. You will be tired. The boats I got coming in are in horrible condition. And I bring in horrible condition boats so I can show you everything. If I brought a new boat in, what could I show you? How to use a spray detailer on it? So I bring in the worst condition boats for the boat class. And I only teach it once a year. The most common question I get about the boat class is after it's over. <laughs> when is the next class? <laughs> people say, when's the next class? Thinking it's like next week. No, it's next year. I can't believe how many times I've had to answer that question. So if you want to go to the boat class, it's in March. Get okay. in, go to it, or wait for a year. All right, here we go. We have Umar again. Thanks for answering my previous question. I'm sorry if I ruined your name. <laughs> I have another. I use Gion Cancoat Pro. It starts lose hybro hybrophicity. Tongue tired. After three to two, after two to three washes. By the way, I follow proper prescribed steps with Mr. Pink Shampoo. Hmm. <coughs> well, I would contact Gion. You know. Or could it be maybe the washing techniques? It, maybe? It, it could be washing technique. You know, everything's got to be clean. What are you, what are you using to wash? Your... It could be the water. You know, what's in the water? Yeah. You know, and how water beads up always depends on how the water kind of lands on the car. It could be a lot of things, but you know, Gian makes great stuff. I was interviewed by a magazine over in the UK, and I forget the title of it. And one of the interview questions was, Mike, if you had to pick one product and you're not in the United States and it's not a U.S. product, so what's available in the world outside of the United States did you pick? I chose Gion because their products are such high caliber. They, they produce consistent results consistently and they make something for everything. I mean, there's not, I'm not dissing other brands. I'm just saying, if, you know, on the spot, Mike, what would you use? I go, I'd go Gion. Okay. Their abrasive technology is good. Their coatings are good. Everything they make is good. Okay. Uh, we, your buddy, your buddy's back on. Travis. Travis, if you carpool with Mike, he gives you some free training. He does look the same. Haven't seen him in 20 years. <laughs> so he's, he's been in your year or two when you're driving. You're like, oh, yeah, you know, the other day I had this car. And, and you know. If I ever get back out to Oregon, I'll uh, set up a training class. <laughs> So. so he's going to drive you somewhere? Well, I, I meant to go there last year, and I was going to try to put together a detailing class in my hometown of Albany, but the COVID got in the way. Yep. All right, we have Romero again. I believe your classes are the best fun learning of detailing. Hope COVID-19 finishes up ASAP to travel to and do some of these three-day courses. Thank Always you. welcome. Thank you. Uh, Stuart Kipp. Yep, he was in Australia, so we need to go to him. <laughs> uh, just a few pounds more. I don't know what you're talking about there, Michael. Uh, most people don't think so. I don't know. I, oh, Keith said that he'll dress appropriately. 
Yeah, so we talked about that. Do you know what was he gonna was, come, what was he come in and kill? <laughs> one of my bow classes, uh, one of the guys wore a really nice black shirt, all emblemed up with his business and IDA logos, and it it got so torn up that he, he had to throw it away. I'm telling you, the bow classes, you're not gonna sit in a chair. You're gonna be up. You're gonna be working. You're gonna get dirty. You're gonna be tired. Wear work clothes. And girls, don't wear high heels. Guys, do not wear flip flops. No flip flops. It's not that kind of class. No, I've had I've had that where I just couldn't even understand a guy show up in flip flops for one of my classes, dude. Someone's gonna step on your foot or drop a tool on it, let yeah, alone that, the chemicals, you know. That would hurt. Yeah. So dress up. Well, I always send out an email before the class. In fact, I'm sending out the. I, it's called important information. I'm sending it out next week to everybody that's signed up for the boat class and the three day car class. And in it, it gives you all the information you need, and it actually says. Please get a good night's sleep before the class starts. I don't worry about you getting a good night's sleep the day, you know, the, the night after that class. Yep. And dress accordingly. It says guys, no flip flops, girls, no high heels. So. And you will want your rest because you will be working and doing this. Oh, buffing out boats is <laughs> hard. Is not fun. You know, if you think about a boat, the side of a boat is not straight up down. It goes away from you. So when you're you're pushing a buffer or a sander, you're you're pushing there's away your from yourself. Every, there's nothing easy about detailing boats. So that's why the only boat I ever really liked to detail was my Sanger drag boat. It just has a big flat. And bow. it was only about like that high. And I never did that part. You know, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, just did the, that. I did that part in the scoop. Oh, you're too funny. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning into another edition. This one, I think it was the 36th one. Uh, we will be back again next. Yeah, you, your class is for another three weeks. So we'll be back for another three weeks. Yes. Three weeks of uh, two or three weeks. Because we will be off the week that he's doing his, uh, his detailing class here because this is going to be total chaos out we, here. I, no, I still plan on doing it. I'll have a special guest. We got, all right. Well, maybe. Yeah, all right. yeah. I stand corrected. Yeah, we so will do one that Thursday. Thursday, February 18th, the okay. day before the three-day class, I'll have uh, Chris Metcalf. We'll do another round table. We'll have Tony Pan. We'll have like nine VIPs are coming to that class. All right. Yeah. No, yeah. So I stand corrected. So get everything. That'll be a fun fun live broadcast. So if you want to talk to the vendors directly, that would be one to, if you have any questions about their products or any of their tools. Dr. Beasley will be here. Yeah. LC Power Tools, Bob Eichelberg, Jason Brennan, Chris Metcalf. Uh, uh, Tony Pando, Swiss, Swiss Chris, Chris West, West from Solution Finish. Uh, I can't rent them all off, but a lot of guys, a lot of guys. So, so, I stand corrected. We will not be taking a break during the week of his class. We will be here. And after that, I think this was good. Uh, if you do have any other questions, post them down in the comments. We always come back and read them. And if you do have any topics that you would like us to see or to do, you'd like to see us do. <laughs> I said that all bad. Did you say see-do? That's, see that's a yeah. jet ski. Yeah. Put them in the comments down below, and we will always take a look at those. And this whole video spawned from one of you guys' questions. So that's how this topic came to be. So we and do read. You remember how Ron Burgundy would close out uh, oh, his, his uh, movie? Stay, uh, stay classy, San Diego. Stay shiny, world. Oh, ow. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end this before he comes up with another one. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs>